Hello everyone, and welcome to the 40th episode of Analyzing Evil, featuring our patron pick for the month of August, Scar from The Lion King. This is a character that follows a trope that has become somewhat common in storytelling, that of the younger brother lusting after the throne of his elder. Inspired by Claudius from Shakespeare's Hamlet, this character has an arc that is very similar to his inspiration. However, unlike the well-intentioned Claudius, Scar's intentions are far from noble, and his desire to seek the throne is born from jealousy and a lust for power for the sake of power and nothing else. In this video, we'll be looking at what makes this loathsome lion such a dastardly character, one who could give many human villains a run for their money. Now without further ado, let's begin. Being born second in line in any family, never mind a royal one, often imparts upon an individual some sort of an inferiority complex towards their elder sibling. Whether that manifests as jealousy, anger, or resentment is ultimately up to their environment, experiences, and the way they're raised. It isn't always the case, in reality or fiction, that a younger sibling develops this sort of relationship with their sibling. As in the real world, it's certainly more likely that their relationship will be one of love. In fiction, however, unless both these siblings happen to be of the heroic inclination, this sort of negative relationship with an elder sibling is almost a given. This is the case with Scar, who grew up envying his brother, not only because of his position as heir to the throne, but because he was much more genetically gifted, being stronger and more handsome of a lion compared to Scar, who looks markedly different from the rest of his pride. I imagine their parents doted upon Mufasa as well, and even if they hadn't, I'm sure the inherently jealous Scar perceived it that way. In regards to their appearance, Scar, by comparison, is much lighter than Mufasa, with a belly that hangs low off his thin frame and a pronounced hunch manifesting when he's sitting. In contrast to the prideful stride of Mufasa, Scar slinks about with a gait that is more reminiscent of both a cat who's ashamed of what it's done and one who's constantly on the hunt. His smile is congruent with the way he speaks and behaves. His venom-laced voice always uttering words of condescension and sarcasm when dealing with those around him, the majority of whom he despises. And when he isn't flashing his equally devious smile, he's wearing a near-permanent scowl on his face. Though Scar's dream to usurp his brother certainly comes from his desire to hold power, he also holds the belief that he's more intelligent than his brother, which gives him a right to the throne that supersedes the might of Mufasa, his brain being worth more than his brother's brawn. Except that brain does little in the way of bolstering one's chances in a head-on battle with Brawn, which leaves Scar in a position where he needs to deploy underhanded tactics and manipulation to maneuver his way around the world of strength that he lives in. Thus, Scar takes advantage of the poor and less intelligent folk of the animal kingdom, the hyenas, who are susceptible to his promises of sating their hunger and providing them a place higher up on the food chain, giving them a sense of purpose and uplifting them beyond what they themselves believe they're capable of. In this way, Scar is a master of propaganda, and in the scene where he has his loyal subjects marching to his song, he looks and acts the part of a megalomaniacal dictator. Scar may have his own army, but this army fights a losing battle while Mufasa is alive, as not only is he far stronger than several packs of hyena, but he also has the distinction of being a symbol of hope for his people, one that they would rally to in the face of a threat to his kingdom protecting what is rightfully his from the powers that would plot to dethrone him. And there's the other problem with an attack on Pride Rock, the fact that Mufasa is the rightful king, and that this rightful king has an heir. Even if Scar and his hyena minions were to somehow defeat him and kill Simba in the process, Scar would be looked at as nothing more than a murderer and a pretender, one who I imagine wouldn't last long as king of a pride of lions who despised him. So, in order to secure the kingdom, he needs to get rid of both father and son in a way that can't be traced back to him. So Scar forms a plot in which he lures Simba away from the watchful eyes of the pride, placing him in a perilous position in which his chances of survival are slim. Mufasa rushes to save his son alone without considering what he may be running into, an ideal situation that leaves Scar in a position that provides him artificial strength in dealing with his brother, both situationally and literally in the form of a stampeding herd. And with one fell swoop, Scar realizes his deepest desire, his ascension to the throne, and the quiet disposal of his brother, adding an extra layer of satisfaction to this triumph by ensuring that Mufasa knows he was the one who orchestrated his downfall. 
However, Scar makes a fatal mistake here that's a common downfall for many villains. He trusts his idiotic minions to kill Simba when he should have done so himself, a mistake that will end up being his undoing. Now, if Scar hadn't shown his dictatorial colors already, in his speech to his new kingdom, he feigns sorrow as he immediately transitions into establishing his new order, ushering in a new and terrible hierarchy while his brother's corpse is still warm. Though he's now in this position of power, his old wounds regarding his brother never fully heal. And to show how jealous he still is of his brother and how much more inferior he feels when compared to him, Scar enacts a law that makes mentioning Mufasa in his presence illegal, an act which may indicate that Scar feels a certain amount of guilt towards murdering his brother. But considering the kind of man he is, I doubt that's true. As is often the case with a new authoritarian regime, Scar's promises of a new glorious world helmed by himself wasn't a promise that was destined to last, as by the time Simba has grown into an adult, he's reduced Pride Rock to nothing but a barren wasteland. This is of no consequence to Scar, as he was always looking to rule for his own selfish desires to be recognized and to be king. But this shows us more than anything that his desire to do so is wholly singular. And rather than ruling his kingdom, he simply wishes to be recognized and praised as ruler so he can spend his days lazing about and being waited upon. And just like a cruel dictator, he's quick to blame those around him for the misfortunes that fall upon his kingdom. As we can see when he chastises Sarabi for failing to provide adequate food for his flock, as who's to blame if not the lionesses who are responsible for hunting? Certainly not Scar, when Sarabi dares to suggest that they abandon his kingdom to save their people, pointing out that if they don't, Scar has sentenced them to death. He tells her to accept that fate, as a man like Scar wouldn't dare abandon his prize, not for anything or anyone. But the decision to stay in this broken land would be one that he would never get to make, as his one error in his plot to secure the throne has returned. And now, Scar is in a dire predicament. At first, he has the upper hand, as he has the strength of the hyenas behind him. And Simba still believes after all this time that his father's death was his fault. And Scar manages to manipulate the rest of the pride into believing this to be true. And though his sly tone and convincing story works, Scar's need for macabre satisfaction, the same satisfaction he got from murdering Mufasa, ends up being his undoing. With his crimes revealed, Scar goes on the defensive, and being the coward that he is, he feigns weakness and submission before attempting to get the upper hand on Simba through deception. However, men, or lions, like Scar, are almost always doomed to fail, and this horrible creature fittingly meets his demise at the teeth of the only beings who he managed to turn to his side, ones he inevitably betrayed in the end. And at this end, who was Scar? He was a jealous, manipulative, and gruesome creature, one who was born second fiddle to a brother that was better than him in nearly every way. His desire to have power and to be recognized as a lion as worthy as his noble brother led him to one conclusion, murder. As once Simba was born, he had no chance outside of underhanded tactics of being king. As king, Scar was more comfortable catering to his own needs than the needs of his people, and anyone who dared to question his orders or stand in his way was dealt with with nothing but cruelty. Snide, brutal, and selfish to the core, Scar is a great example of what the poison that is envy can do to a person, a poison that leaves them jaded and cynical towards everyone and everything, honing in a person's mind to be focused solely on the things they don't have, leaving them broken and vicious, and a person whose entire being has been corrupted by evil. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Analyzing Evil and I hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Scar? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below and leave a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured in a future episode while you're at it. If you liked this video and want to see more like it appearing in your feed, click the subscribe button to keep up on the latest episodes and feel free to leave a like while you're at it. Thank you once again to all of my existing subscribers for your continued and incredible support. If you'd like to support the channel even further, consider signing up as a patron over on Patreon. You can find a link to Patreon down in the description. Thank you to everyone who's signed up so far, and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Join the channel's Discord server to interact with myself and the community, 
and follow me on the social media platforms listed in the description for occasional updates on the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.